Hello, and welcome to the next episode. Um, in the last episode, somebody complained that I wasn't being realistic with the way I routed some of the traffic. So I'm going to try something a little different. Um, you can see here that I've got a few different longer path options. So we can actually see what a more realistic bypass scenario is going to be like. And it might be a little bit shorter than the last one uh, as far as the, p the, the pathway options. But what we're really going to focus on in this video is just how the traffic moves about the entire city. So a lot of this is going to be panned all the way out and it's going to be fast forwarded to about 10 times normal speed and well 10 times uh, llama speed I guess because I sped the video up after recording it mostly in llama. Um, I've got the, the pathway all the way at the top as you can see is a tunnel that goes through the, the hill and then you've got the middle pathway and then you've got the main intersection that is a typical four-way stop. Now, it doesn't really matter how long the bypass is going to be because ultimately the traffic right now, and I know they're working on it, they've, they've made a few statements now claiming that they're going to fix this problem, but as you'll see, traffic still clumps up and it takes almost like an act of, act of Congress to get them to actually go the other way. So you'll see the residential on the top right, the industrial in the top left, and the commercial at the bottom. I've got the services kind of clumped towards the middle except for a few of the, the other ones. Now, I'm going to make a response to Lucy Bradshaw's post on the SimCity blog, which I'll give you a link in the description of the video below. I don't really know how to cover this. Um, how somebody who works for a game company could be so, I don't know, disconnected, completely out of focus with the people who play the game that she's supposed to be a fan of. I just, her post basically says, it, it's, it's a giant finger to everybody who has ever been a fan of the SimCity series. And it truly demonstrates why it took them 10 years to get back to this franchise and it's it's ultimately it boils down to th their whole plan if you read it speaks volumes it, it, it will tell you that this is a test bed basically for the future of Max's games all of them it, it doesn't matter SimCity The Sims Spore any of them they're they're, they're all basically going to be clumped and in, clumped into one type of thing and the idea behind it is we're going to get you to focus entirely on the online and we're going to force you to buy all these expansions we're going to get rid of the modders because the modders make us lose money and then we're going to just flat out lie about what the servers do and don't do they've been touting the servers handling part of the simulation this entire time and she never mentions a word of it never says anything about it because she knows that the rest of us have discovered that's simply not true no matter what they try to make us believe, there's been packet analysis, there's been offline play, there's been all kinds of things that have been proven that they just weren't telling the truth about that. And then the line that really takes the cake is, the game we launched is only the beginning for us. It's not final and never will be. In many ways, we built an MMO. Yeah. SimCity's not an MMO. In an MMO, you're constantly interacting with other people. You're constantly chatting with people or you're on a chat service and you're always communicating. In this game, the chat doesn't even function. And to be perfectly honest, there's no need to constantly communicate with everyone because everything is so broken and even if you need a gift, I it's not going to come through right away the moment that you need it anyway. So even if you're sitting in the same room with the other person that you're playing with in your region and they send you a gift, chances are you're not going to get it before it's too late and you already have to basically start a whole new city because god forbid you can actually delete or re-roll the city from scratch so i'm going to add some streetcars and now contrary to popular belief they actually do help the traffic you just got to be careful how you place them if you'll notice i put them about on every block but not on the interior because i don't want them crossing in the middle of of the everybody's houses so we put as many cars as we can because we don't care about money. And as long as the Sims can get to where they want to go via mass transit, they a lot of them actually will. Now, 
ironically enough, you see there's a lot of pedestrian action going on and the traffic problems compared to the day before I set this up are actually quite a bit less. And as you'll notice, we're already up to 25,000 population. Now, what, what, what you want to be careful of is when you, when you put in the mass transit and, and you get all these people using it, they have to be able to get to reasonably every area they need to get to without causing too much of a headache for getting there. Um, and then later you'll see when I put the bus stop in, the stops are going in the interiors of the blocks and a couple of other places that the streetcars don't directly go. And the reason for this is because it splits the mass transit travelers and prevents redundancy in the mass transit system, which actually in the real world helps mass transit, you know, and, and, and makes the traffic spread a little bit better. Okay, to truly get a grip on the traffic problem in this game, you need to understand how the simulator is actually running the AI of this thing. Um, they're not just people going to and from work and running about their daily lives in a normal, everyday fashion like we would in the normal world. They don't just wake up and go from their house to work, back to their house, and then maybe to the store, and then back home for supper. Nobody actually owns a house, nobody actually owns a job, and they're never actually going to the same store for anything in particular at any given moment in time. So what's happening is the houses or buildings, if you will, produce workers every morning. and those workers run off to the nearest open worker slot in another building. So workers go find jobs, shoppers go find stores, and students go find schools. Um, they all come out of the house at the exact same time, going for the exact same target every single time. Th they, they go from whatever's the easiest and closest to get to first, and then they kind of pile around it and spread around in a weird fashion until they've filled all the slots that are filled, and then the unemployed ones go back home. Um, because of this, it doesn't really matter how you route the traffic. They're all still going to take a bunch of th that shortest path to get to point B. And once they've all clumped around point B, they're going to move to point C, D, E, F, and so on. So when you change the pathing, what you're going to have is instead of all of them taking one road, they're all going to take five roads but they're all going to arrive at the exact same intersection, which is still gridlocked. Only now, it's gridlocked from every single side. So there's no escape anywhere for anyone. There. Check this out. We have complete gridlock and yet they're not going around to take the four-way stop just they're not there's no reason why they can't there's no reason why going even straight through that one and going to the next block down isn't going to save them time when they're sitting in such gridlock they don't go straight through they don't turn right they, they don't go straight past that even they, they just they just sit there and that's because they're all crowding, trying to get to the one spot until it fills up. And then you can see them all, you know, what you just saw. They all turned left to turn around, basically. And, and it's pointless. It's, it's retarded, ridiculous behavior. I just want to briefly touch on the way services kind of move around the city. Um, if you look, there's a fire, and th all the fire trucks are kind of just rambling about. And you got three, four, I don't know how many of them are sitting there, and then they all bunch up on the one last fire at the end, and then they all go home. It's a bit ridiculous. And the sad thing is, with for all the bugs that this game has, like when you turn the graphics all the way up and, and you, you take a real good look, it could be such a great game. But everything that they've done wrong just leaves a bad taste in your mouth and it all falls short.